So just scrying the lingua ignota word aegans, which is the word for angel. And I'm sensing right away, this is the previous vision I had, which was for God, aegons, was it sort of ended, as it were, with a feeling of the heart. But this time, when I'm scrying the word angel, it's just literally, it's this complete heart presence. So this is important when thinking about um, how to work with angels is that it's very much a heart-to-heart -heart communication. And it's a heart that is very, very soft. And the sense that I'm getting is that this is, again, with God being in constant contact with the heart, I'm sensing him having, it's like this intelligent heart over whichever realm the angel happens to be closest to. And I'm not seeing this as something static. So I'm seeing certain angels can move through as part of God's rotation. I'm seeing that um, angels can sort of have shifting responsibilities and move into different places and areas. They're all still divine and in this very fundamental way, but it's like uh, just the movement of the divine himself. And it's important for us as we're recognizing this is to, and being told to really feel into, as we feel into our hearts and realize that our hearts are literally, if you if you open your eyes and look at this, if you look at this, if you're thinking about this, there there it is a movement of the heart, right? So it's more being becoming aware of this as a movement of the heart, and and perceiving the world as a, as in part a reflection of this heart space that then we can get into this understanding of our own angelic natures and of being told specifically that humanity does have an angelic nature to it. Um, it gets lost, it gets obscured, it gets, um, you know, it's possible for our consciousness to fall, but it's also possible to raise it back up. And so as we, as we move into this, heart space, then we have to reckon with things that we have done to our own hearts or that others may be responsible for and that we have not yet recovered from or taken the, the individual responsibility to work through. Because even if something's done to us, that doesn't mean that therefore it's not our responsibility. No, your heart is always something you're responsible for. And the condition of that is always something you're responsible for, whether whether you like it or not. It's just how it is, you know? So I'm sort of getting this sense of, it's almost like a fabric. It's a, a connections among angels. And there's this very, it's a very rich feeling. And... It's like if you were to, it's like if you see a sequined dress and different parts of the light hit you at different times. That's the, that's the very much the, the sense here of, um, it's, it's like, it's like a garland almost. So I'm seeing this and what I'm seeing is that as our hearts are moved to call with one angel, sometimes like our our consciousness can be fixed on one 
part of the dress and maybe that's where we where our consciousness is so this the, like one light is what i'm trying to say and maybe this is where our heart ought to be um just focused so if you see somebody who's focused on let's say and i'm i'm getting the sense too that different deities or different you know what have you from different religions it's all kind of like part of the same mix really um but if that's if that's what you're drawn to then it's because your heart is already close so if you're somebody who prays to saint michael if you're somebody who prays to raphael and in, in in terms of an intercessory interceding prayer intercession uh prayer then then this is something that your heart is just drawn to it's just in your nature there's a natural resonance or affiliation to use a, a better word that you have with that a better connection whereas some people may just be drawn to the whole to all of the lights at once and some people may be drawn to the to the to the dress as it were to to the actual um to the divine himself and that's really what it is and so um you know obviously you know the, the we're all part of this whole universe so it's important to not deny any to deny any of it really um but to be aware of uh the divinity to whom, whom we're in this this divine experience you know if you're going to take a less um personalized view for lack of a better term if you're just going to say this experience of clear light mind but really it's 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 within our hearts it's within our mind it's a heart mind it's a it's really a mind heart at the end of the day so this is where this um this experience of just a clear consciousness it's really coming from that same you know different words you can put on it but it, it's really all of a piece <laughs> so and i'm getting i'm trying to get in here to there's a, a, a correction or a very precise language that i'm being drawn to here which is that a clear light consciousness is it is the vibration of the heart of the divine so that's where our minds are when we're experiencing the fullness of divine consciousness and the angels can from each of their own perspectives get us there but it's sort of like trying to triangulate eventually you need to understand that you need the whole of god in order to true to recognize your own your heart's exact place within it and once it's there by the way i'm getting like this sense of like um each is like the spiritual heartbeat the 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 actual emotional spiritual emotional energetic heart sort of it has its own vibration pulse whatever and it's like a drop of water just creating concentric waves out just constantly so if you imagine a drip and then the waves across the still water that's where our our own individual hearts land and so getting in touch with that we can thereby sort of if you think of god like an ocean or this this god as god is conceiving of himself we within it as we become more angelic we are like somebody who let's say knows how to navigate very well in their ship or better yet um we know what to do we know how to sway with the ocean and we contribute our own little parts in our ways but ma the main thing is is that we are if you can conceive of the vastness of the ocean and everything that it's doing from moment to moment if you can conceive of yourself as being fully integrated as a drop of water within that ocean and doing what you're supposed to be doing, then you are 
adding to this richness of the divine uh, through this angelic consciousness, through this complete, you know, and I'm saying a drop, it's really more like an atom, an atom or a molecule of water doing what it ought to be doing within this larger, and what I say ought to be doing, that, that it's whatever its own nature is. So like, you know, if you could imagine billions of unique molecules, let's, let's just settle it down to the population of Earth right now. But it's like each of us is, um, is behaving in accordance with our heart within this vast ocean of other hearts. And with that, then better and better things are possible for us from a consciousness standpoint. Um, as Because then we're enabling all of this potential of God as he is working through each and every one of our hearts, then all of a sudden things can like click into place for something wonderful. So we just have to keep that in mind. And that's sort of at the end of the day, um, what makes, whether, whether we see results or not in our lifetime, whether or not, um, whether or not it's something, anything close to what we expect, it doesn't matter. You know, that's, that's kind of the key takeaway message and the, 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 the benefit of working, uh, to become, to have a more angelified cons consciousness. So that's the vision.